Welcome to our first remote bedtime story made by Mindset Seed. Mindset Seed is a growth mindset platform which strives to advance education and self-actualization. We produce next generation of leaders and innovative thinkers. Through our remote bedtime story program, we strive to increase the, the reading and communication skills of children while stimulating the innovative thinking. Today, Jade will be reading the book, The Girl Who Never Makes Mistakes, a book about a perfectionist who tries to overcome a challenge. So first I want to begin our discussion by asking you guys what you think about the cover. Since personally I feel that the girl is facing a lot of stress while being while trying to be perfect all the time, as evident by her smile, by her small smile, while it should be, I think, bigger when she's trying to like juggle all the things that she wants to be perfect. What do you think, Sam? Um, I agree with what you said. Besides the fact that she's trying to be perfect and try to keep like a balance of everything, um, I feel like the font itself stands as a sharp contrast to what she's doing. Because even though she seems to be very stable and balancing everything, the font is all wonky and the word never um, is purple, well, while the rest of the font is all pink. And I feel like the author did that as a stylistic choice because um, he or she wanted to emphasize that word um, to, and point out like, its importance and I think we'll find out later uh, why it's so important in the rest of the book. Uh, what about you Jade? Um, I concur with Ann and you. I do think that the significance of juggling is to represent um, a possibility that anything could happen. You can make mistakes anytime. Any mishap can lead to a failure and that's what I think of it. Um, so I would like to ask a question. Um, have you guys ever made a mistake and how did that make you feel? Um, personally, throughout my life, I've made many mistakes and I've definitely learned from it. But however, the first mistake that I remember making or recalling is when I was in elementary school, I remember eagerly raising my hand to answer this math question. However, my brain froze at that moment and I was unable to answer the question. My classmates were laughing since they thought it was funny, and I guess it was in the mind of a like elementary student. Um, but after that incident, I felt that it was okay to make mistakes, and it's just that if I learn from the mistakes, then everything is actually better, and I'm actually the one benefiting benefiting from the mistakes that I've made. How about you, Jade? Um, I make many mistakes, um, especially when I skate, I fall down a lot and I have to recover. Every time I fall down, it means that I'm able to come back up and do better. Each fall is very important. Oh, so I guess you would say that the, your ice skating experience kind of like alludes to your school experience because uh, basically even though you like always um, skate and you fall down, you always get back up from your mistakes. And I guess it's symbolic. It, you're kind of saying that it's symbolic for your school and how like even when you make mistakes in like tests or something, instead of treating it like a failure, you learn from it and try to like get up from it, right? Right. So thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us. With and so the reason we were talking about our mistakes was that this actually segues into the story about a girl who tries to overcome, um, like I said before, making a mistake, a challenge that she faced from not being so perfect all the time. So I'm super excited to find out what happens to this perfectionist girl. So let's begin our story. The Girl Who Never Made Mistakes by Mark Pett and Gary Rubinstein, illustrated by Mark Pett. For Beatrice, bottom well, Friday began like any other day. She matched her socks and, of course, she put her shoes on their proper feet. She remembered to feed her hamster, Humbert, his favorite food, broccoli. And when she made a sandwich for her brother, Carl's lunch, she used exactly the same amount of peanut butter as jelly. When she stepped outside to greet her fans, she didn't forget to say good morning and thank you. They asked if she made her bed, she had. 
They asked if she forgot to do her math homework. Nope. What's about, what about tonight's talent show? They asked. I'm ready, said Beatrice with a smile. After all, her juggling act had won three years in a row. Most people in town didn't even know Beatrice's name. They just called her the girl who never makes mistakes because for as long as anyone can remember, she never did. Unlike Beatrice, Carl made a lot of mistakes. He ate his crayons and drew with his green beans. He danced with his hands and played the piano with his feet. Carl loved to make mistakes. At school, Beatrice was on a cooking team with her two best friends, Millie and Sarah. To make their giant rhubarb muffins, they needed four eggs. Beatrice went to the refrigerator and carefully chose the biggest, egg eggiest eggs she could find. But on the way back, her legs slipped out of, from under her. The eggs went flying. Beatrice was about to make her first mistake, but she didn't. That was close, thought Beatrice. Sorry, Beatrice. I dropped a piece of rhubarb. Oh, uh, uh. For the rest of the school day, Beatrice couldn't stop thinking about her almost mistake. On her way home from school, Beatrice watched Millie and Sarah ice skating in the park. Come join us, said Millie. It's fun, said Sarah. Beatrice watched them slip and slide on the frozen pond. Millie and Sarah laughed as they wobbled on the ice. No thanks, said Beatrice. At supper, Beatrice barely touched her food. Is everything all right, kiddo? asked her father. I'm worried I'll mess up tonight, said Beatrice, and everyone will be watching. Worry? You don't make mistakes, he said with a smile. Beatrice tried to smile too. After supper, Beatrice got ready for the talent show. First, she woke up Humbert from his nap. Next, she got the salt shaker from the kitchen table. Finally, she filled a balloon with water. The school auditorium was packed. Beatrice felt her stomach jumping around inside her. Beatrice waited for her juggling music to begin. That's her. That's a girl who never makes mistakes, said a woman. Oh, we know she'll be perfect, said a man. When the music started, she tossed Humbert into the air. Next, she added the salt shaker and finally the water balloon. Beatrice didn't miss a beat. The crowd clapped with delight. But Beatrice noticed something odd about the salt shaker. The specks falling out of it were not white. Achoo! Humbert was so surprised by his knees that he grabbed the water balloon with his claws. Kapoli! Humbert Pieces of water balloon and the pepper rained down on top of Beatrice. For the first time in as long as anyone could remember, Beatrice made a mistake, and it was a big one. The music stopped. Beatrice didn't know what to do. Cry? Run off the stage? The crowd sat stunned. They couldn't believe that the girl who never makes mistakes made a mistake. Beatrice looked up at Humbert. He looked back at her. His hamster fur was soaked and speckled with bits of balloons. Beatrice let out a giggle. The giggle grew into a chuckle and the chuckle became a laugh. The people in the crowd looked at her 
I'm sorry. The people in the crowd looked at each other and then laughed at Beatrice. They began to giggle, then chuckle. Then, finally, roar with laughter. Beatrice and the audience laughed until they couldn't remember why they were laughing. That night, Beatrice slept better than, than she ever did. In the morning, no fans greeted Beatrice. When she got dressed, Beatrice, for no reason at all, put a polka dot sock on one foot and a plaid sock on the other. Beatrice and Carl made sandwiches. This time, they put the peanut butter and jelly on the outside. They called it an inside out B, P, B, J, P, B, and J. Lunch was messy and delicious. Later, Beatrice found Millie and Sarah skating in the park. They fell a lot and laughed. Now, people no longer called her the girl who never makes mistakes. They just called her Beatrice. What do you think the message uh, is that the author is trying to convey? Um, personally, I think that the author is trying to say that it's okay to make mistakes and sometimes being a perfectionist is not always the best thing. As we can see at first, Beatrice was a very perfect person. However, after making her first mistake and actually embracing it, she began to sleep better and actually have more fun. So that was what I thought of as the message the author was trying to convey. I agree with what you said. I feel like um, she, the book is trying to show that we're all human and Beatrice discovered that she was happiest not having to live up to these expectations because she found out that um, she was able, after she was like able to like brush off all that peer pressure, self pressure that was weighing her down, um, she discovered that she was the happiest at the thought that she was just like everyone else, human. For sure, I completely agree. Like she was, a, she was kind of like her brother more and she actually had more fun with her friends also. Uh, so we do have like a few questions from our audience on. Um, what do you think about Beatrice's character from the beginning and the end of the book? How has she evolved? So I think at first, um, in terms of a growth mindset a fix and a fixed mindset. At the beginning, although she was a perfectionist, she actually had a fixed mindset. And the reason I say this is because after, um, I guess, making her almost first mistake, she was unwilling to try new things. She couldn't embrace the mistakes. However, she felt that if she actually had tried other things, she would continue making the mistake. And that mindset in we call a fixed mindset because she is unable to learn from her mistakes and actually embracing it and growing from it. And after she had embraced her other mistake and actually laughing with the audience, I felt that um, her, her mindset was able to shift into a growth mindset. And at that moment, she was able to try new things, be more creative and actually enjoy life better. A family also asks, how can we feel better when we make a mistake? Um, so personally, when making a mistake, I would basically chart out, oh, why did I make this mistake? And how can I basically not make this mistake anymore and learn from it? And I feel like doing this actually helps us more since it gives us the sense of control over the situation instead of saying, oh, I'm not good enough and that's why I made this mistake, but instead I can fix it and learn from it. What, what do you guys think? Um, I agree with all of you. Um, I feel like we don't need, like, as humans, we shouldn't have to live up to, like, an image or a standard. Uh, we're all human, and our humanity only grows by, in my opinion, by learning and making mistakes and reflecting on them, critiquing ourselves, and improving ourselves. Uh, I don't believe anyone is perfect from the get-go, like, uh, Beatrice strives to be, but I feel like, um, to aim for a close enough range for perfection. We try, we can only do so by improving ourselves and not being afraid to make mistakes and growing from them. So I think another great question from our audience is that how can the message 
of this book be applied to real life? Personally, I think applying it would be, like Sam just said, um, basically embracing a mistake and actually learning from the mistake instead of just trying to make everything so perfect all the time. And actually making a mistake, for example, like you make this mistake on the test and you would identify what's wrong and why you made the mistake. And on, let's say, your final, you wouldn't make that mistake anymore. So personally, I think that is how I would apply it. Yeah, I agree. And I also appreciate the message the author was trying to convey and actually trying to be too f perfect kind of prevents us from doing things that we would like to do. For example, we see Beatrice, um, she does decides not to go to ice skate with her friends because she's afraid to fall. So in the end, when she made a mistake um, at her concert or her talent show, we see that she's a completely different person and she takes into account that her failure um, wasn't at ba as bad as she thought it would be. So it kind of completely changed her and she just realized if you fail, you could just laugh it off, but also you need to work on it and fix those mistakes. And I bet um, Beatrice is, is, um, doesn't have to live with all that stress on her shoulders anymore and she can do whatever she wants now. So we need to learn how to apply this to our real life. We need to let things go. We don't let things dwell on our minds of something that bad happened. And we could see Beatrice, she was dwelling on of her almost mistake and we shouldn't dwell on it. We should just keep moving forward in the right direction. Yeah, I think I agree with all of you. Um, I feel like we're done with our episode here, right? Um, do you have any final concluding words? Um, oh, sadly, this exhausts our time for the episode. Thank you so much for listening, and please visit mindsetseed.org. I wish everyone a good night and sweet dreams. Thank you for listening. <laughs>